So exactly two years ago, I decided to buy the Zcam E2S6. A simple but small looking camera, which is entirely modular. After watching countless reviews and sample footage, I was sold. Within my budget, I could buy a camera that can create stunning images for my clients. At least, that's what I thought at the time. But here we are two years later and my question is, was it worth it? Let's find out together. If you don't know me yet, I'm a freelance video and photographer who also dabbles in the YouTube space. I'm making videos about photography, gear and everything that has to do with making videos. Every video that you see is made on the Zcam. So after two years of heavy usage, I think it's time to let you know what I really think of it. But first, we're going to take a look at some of my favorite footage that I've shot over the years with this precious camera. I decided to go for this camera because I was looking for something that could up my game. But in the end, it wasn't really the camera that took me to the next level. I think that because I put some skin in the game, I took my filmmaking more serious. I began thinking more about scripting, about lighting and about different camera angles that could elevate the potential of this camera. And looking back to it now, it's not really the camera that elevated my production quality. It was the scripting and the lighting. So buying this camera made me do it. So in a weird way, it was a good investment. If you're thinking about buying this camera, you have to know you only get the brain. This thing is entirely modular. For it to function properly, you need to buy a cage, a top handle, a side handle, a monitor, batteries, bigger batteries, and that's about it. Some people go really hardcore on the rigging, and there are some sweet rigs out there, but I want to keep mine small and simple because I don't want to do a heavy lifting on a shoot that lasts six to eight hours, for example. But to be honest, a big rig certainly helps to impress a client. They take you more serious if you whip out a big camera. I have a previous video about how I rig this camera and I'll link it up right here or here. I'm not sure, this is the first time I'm doing this. If you buy a camera from a certain brand, you become a part of the community. I'm seeing this from Sony to Ari, but also with Zcam. Zcam has a fantastic community and a Facebook page. People who own the same cameras can ask questions and share screen grabs of one of their favorite projects. Even the camera manufacturer reacts to posts and gives constant updates about new cameras or new firmware. It's not all fun and games though, because the trolls are out there. Now let's take it a little bit up to the technical side. With this thing, you can shoot in, hang on, 12-bit ProRes RAW, 12-bit Z-RAW, 10-bit 420, which is H.265, 8-bit 420, which is H264. And I mostly shoot in 4K H.265 because it doesn't take up a lot of space. And to be honest, I'm not shooting that really high quality project. Most of my work is being displayed on a phone. So that doesn't really matter to the clients, but it's good to know that the options are out there. Right now I'm working for a digital marketing agency that needs a lot of small videos to test out for advertising. That means for me, a lot of testimonials, lifestyle videos and product shots. But next to that, I did a lot of different shoots with this camera. For example, a travel video, nightlife video, even weddings, you name it. This camera can handle it all. Because this is a modular camera, you have to pay really close attention when you pack your bags that you have every tool necessary for the job. The ND filter is separate, the monitor, the cables, the handles. So bear in mind every time you have to go to a shoot that you pack all of your things. It has happened to me a lot of times that I forgot my ND filter, for example, or that time when I didn't bring that thing that connects to my monitor. Also, it's a real pain that I really can't trust the audio inside of the camera. For example, if I'm using my lavalier microphone, the one I'm using right now, 
and I plug it directly into the camera, sometimes it creates a lot of static noises and some sentences are unusable. Therefore, I'm using an external recorder that I use for every shoot. And this way, I'm 100% sure that my audio is always crisp and clean. YouTube videos without autofocus. Yes, this camera's autofocus absolutely sucks. But to be honest, for my YouTube videos, I only use autofocus to focus on my face for shots like these, for example. So what I do is I connect the Z cam to my phone like this. And here you have it. I see myself and if I tap, you see the, the autofocus is terrible. But now it's in focus and we're good to go. As a conclusion, I can say that after two years, I love this camera. It's small, but it can deliver beautiful colors. There has been some times when we almost went our separate ways because I got distracted by other camera brands who do have a killer out of focus and who have a direct XLR input and who don't need all of the extra accessories like for example the Sony FX6. But after every project, when I import the footage, it still brings a smile on my face because the footage is just absolutely stunning. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then please let me know. Also, if you have a question, please leave them in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe, of course. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see each other in the next one. Bye bye.